So cool. First, uh, baking a web map. Uh, you need four ingredients, um, and we'll go into these four ingredients. Uh, first thing is tiles. Uh, secondly, uh, we'll need a mapping library. Um, and some of those libraries are libraries that Mapbox makes, uh, and there's a wide variety of other companies that make these libraries as well. Uh, thirdly, third, uh, you need data um, separate from the tiles that you're making. That'll make sense in a little bit. And then finally, uh, you need the internet. Um, and I could probably argue that you don't need the internet for it, uh, but for the sake of today and my uh, examples and the following examples, you do need the internet. Uh, cool. So map tiles. Uh, these are the base map of your map. So if I go back to this screen, these are map tiles. Uh, they contain a bunch of different information. Uh, they contain label placements, they contain road networks, they contain uh, different water features, uh, whatever you end up needing to put into them. Um, and they're literally just squares of geographic information. Um, and we'll go into why they're squares in a minute. Uh, so tiles exist at different zoom levels. Um, I tried to load this map to show and I like throttled the speed at which, si which tiles are loading onto the page um, to actually show you like when someone zooms in uh, or when, when you zoom in, uh, your map needs to pick up different information as it gets closer and closer to the earth. So unlike static cartography um, where you have one map that you're making and you have to print a thousand of them and you're really frightened about it, uh, <laughs> which is coming up for me in a little bit, uh, you need to create a map for every single zoom level from the whole world down to a single street. Um, so those are different tiles loading in the background here, and they have different amounts of information. A uh, little bit more into tiles. Tiles, like I said, are squares. So at zoom level one, you have four tiles on the, on the world. So zoom level zero, you have one tile. Uh, and as you go into a single tile, uh, it expands into four, and then into 16, and then into, it keeps going up. Um, and so this just kind of shows, as you go up an increasing zoom level, um, mathematically. Uh, each tile is the exact same size, but covers a smaller and smaller extent of the Earth as you zoom in. Uh, why, how can we do that? Um, maps and geographic information exist on a lot of different projections or different uh, coordinate reference systems. Uh, the one thing that makes web maps very, very possible is this projection called Spherical Mercator. Um, and we are able to take the entire Earth and stretch it out into, a, into a, a cylinder, and then cut that cylinder and fold it onto a map. So now we have some sort of rectangular space that we can divide into equal squares and cut those up into map tiles. I'm not gonna go into projections at all uh, <laughs> because Daniel's gonna make fun of me if I start talking about them more uh, because it won't be right. Uh, so, <laughs> well, you can take it in your head. Um, <laughs> and so those tiles, uh, I love you, Daniel. Uh, those tiles, uh, sorry, this is a little hard to read up here, um, so I'll read it out loud. Um, they don't just like come out of thin air, uh, they have to be created. Uh, and if you have one tile at zoom level zero, if you go all the way to zoom level 22, you're in the millions and millions and millions and millions of tiles. Um, so there's a lot of information that needs to be, uh, needs to exist to cover the entire earth. Uh, so there's these big heavy tools um, that take your geographic information. Um, and Helena said, uh, open street map. I'm not going to go too deep into OpenStreetMap, but Mapbox uses uh, a globally uh, crowdsourced map database called OpenStreetMap uh, to generate our map tiles, uh, and a number of other companies use it as well. Um, so we have these big heavy tools that you pass OSM information into, and it slices and dices, and it's like, I'm going to create my zoom level one tiles, spits them out, create my zoom level two tiles, spits them out. And I'll show you a very, very detailed drawing of this uh, right now. Uh, but the outcome of all these tiles we refer to as a tile set. All right, my detailed drawing. Um, so this is literally the mechanism that we use at Mapbox and that many other people use. Um, it's a tool called Mapnik, which is open sourced um, and created outside of Mapbox itself. Uh, but you take your data, it can be shape files, uh, it can be OSM data, it can be whatever you want. You pass it into this data tiling pipeline. Um, which it is now officially referred to here, and it spits up tiles. These tiles need to come out at zooms, as we said before. So we put all the zoom level one tiles into a bucket. We put all of our zoom level two tiles into a bucket, all of our zoom level three tiles into a bucket, so we know how to retrieve them when we need each specific tile and zoom. How's everyone doing? Good, any questions? 
Sweet. Actually, you should have a lot of questions. I haven't covered much. <laughs> uh, cool. Okay. So tiles, that was our first ingredient. Uh, our second ingredient is a mapping library. A uh, mapping library for uh, the sake of today is something that's typically, typically written in JavaScript, uh, which is a language that is used by uh, browsers, uh, web browsers, and allows you to interact with the web page itself. Um, so a lot of the mapping work that we do today online is very possible because of JavaScript. Uh, this library is specifically written to retrieve those tiles that just went into those buckets. Um, so you wouldn't use a mapping library to write, uh, I don't know, what are, what are some other JavaScript libraries? You wouldn't use one to create a graph. There's a few of you that are probably like, well, uh, but anyways, you, you use it. Yeah. Can we get a, get a thumbs up from the internet? Can you hear me? Uh, <laughs> uh, actually, I don't know. Yeah. 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 Cool. Uh, so that, that library is specifically for grabbing and retrieving map tiles uh, that we've set, and we, you'll load it into your web page um, and putting them in the proper place in order. We just got a better sign. Oh, so. nice. Thank you, internet people. Um, sweet. Uh, so these mapping libraries, uh, the one that I love, uh, it's very near and dear to my heart because it was the one I luckily got to use during Rob's uh, JavaScript mapping uh, endeavor. Um, which also involved us writing down like our emotions every day, <laughs> which is really funny because it went very downhill very quickly. <laughs> well, yeah, but Sam at like a semi-positive level is actually like Sam's not liking this. <laughs> uh, so Leaflet.js is uh, one of the more popular ones and it's all open source. Uh, Mapbox.js uh, is created at Mapbox, but is basically a wrapper around Leaflet. Uh, open Layers is another open, uh, another open source library. And then like the Google Maps API, for instance, uh, allows you to retrieve tiles uh, created by Google. Um, so all these are different libraries. Some of them are open source, some of them are closed source. Most of them are free to use, but if you start collecting a ton of, of map tiles because you have a really hot new popular application, uh, you're gonna start paying for all those tiles that you're receiving or that you're sending. Uh, cool, so further down the chain of my highly detailed system, uh, we have those buckets that you uh, may or may not remember from a previous slide. Uh, we've got Zoom 1, Zoom 2, Zoom 3, and those exist on their own no matter what, if someone is asking for tiles or not. Uh, but when someone goes to a web page and it loads a web map that, that exists there, that mapping library sends something, sends a signal to wherever these tiles are stored. It sends a signal that it's like, I want Zoom level 3, tile 55, and an X an X direction and tile 70 in a Y direction, which is down instead of up in this case, um, thanks to spherical, spherical um, That's right, that might not be right. <laughs> uh, and uh, and it, it's able to find it because we put everything in these different buckets uh, and it sends it back to the computer and then it starts putting things in place. Uh, so as you zoom on a map, it's gonna make more requests to these buckets and send them back. Uh, and I'm going to try my best to not go into any code because Molly and Brad will be doing that a little bit more than I will. Um, but that's using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript to do all of that to make your web page work. Um, so it puts all of your tiles in a nice little grid that is not noticeable because all the data matches up, so you can't see the lines. Uh, finally, so can someone tell me what the first three ingredients are? Anyone to call me out and say that I only talked about two? <laughs> I was just seeing if you're awake. Um, sweet. Okay, so the first two were tiles. Secondly is a mapping library. Third uh, is data, or more data for whoever those academics out there. Um, so data exists in two ways. One is on to create those tiles in the first place. So you have all of this nice pretty map on the bottom, but say you want to put something else on top. Uh, so we've got our tile layer and we've got a data, data layer. Uh, data, geographic data at least, uh, exist in points, lines, or polygons, and all of sorts of different things in between. Um, but we'll just stick to those three for now. And you can put them on top of your map. Uh, so this is just an example, um, very simple polygon over Washington, or over the district. Um, so you can see everything out around the district and underneath the district is actually our base map, which is comprised of tiles. And then everything 
that is this polygon exists as a separate layer thanks to our mapping libraries. Uh, and I'm not going to go into the data spec of what this polygon exists, but it's called GeoJSON, and I recommend using it. It's great. Uh, and then secondly, here's just some points. Uh, these points are styled. This is Mapbox.js. These points are styled from Mapbox. If you loaded these points in Google, uh, your base map would look differently, or will look different, your points would look different. So all of it's very subject to the library that you're using. Uh, and finally, the internet. Um, seems a little obvious, uh, but I want to just like briefly show like why it's actually very important and how tiles are retrieved uh, over the wire, um, because they don't exist on your computer. Um, and I'm gonna assume that like offline mapping doesn't exist in this current case. Um, people do want to download their tiles to their computer or their devices, but for the sake of now, we are not doing that. Uh, so we need the internet. Uh, Mapbox, for instance, hosts all of its tiles uh, at places that you can retrieve with a specific URL. Uh, all these tiles are ex exist on Amazon S3, if anyone's ever heard of that. Uh, it's just a place to store different files. And we store them in directory structures. Basically, if you go to like your documents folder in your computer, you'd see a folder called Zoom Level Zero, and that one would have, and that folder would contain the tiles named X and Y for where they exist on your tile set. Uh, so. You can go to https colon slash slash www.example.com and add these things. In fact, you're simply working in two directions. It's important to tell you why. People who like Trump like Trump. Your map tile is an image currently. Uh, I'll go through a couple of examples here. So the first one is just openstreetmap.org's uh, own map tile API, which is free to use um, and lovely, but may not have the best style. All right, I'm going to zoom in, um, but if everyone can see, can people see that URL up there? Um, so you can see that we're at zoom level two. Uh, we are at the zero tile over and the first tile down on Y. Uh, I can change this to one and it's going to show me a different part of the world. Uh, I can change this to, I'm going to try and hit somewhere actually on the earth. I might not, <laughs> uh, I could hit water. It's probably going to happen. Um, oh, no, I did. Okay, cool. Uh, so I hit a tile that is at zoom level 10, coordinate 500, coordinate 400. Uh, that's pretty useless on its own, but your mapping library stitches all of those together to make something that's geographically referenceable. Uh, similarly, Mapbox will do this. Mapbox is a tile hosting company. Uh, and this will load a tile set. Oh, no, my token's invalid. Uh, all right, hold on. I can do this quick. So we don't let anybody grab their tokens. You need to, we need to charge people for how many uh, tiles they're loading. Uh, so we want to make sure that we can charge appropriately or at least count appropriately. Where'd I go? There we go. Cool. So uh, Sam needs to set a new access token. Um, yeah, and this is a little harder to see just because of that, but uh, our image tile is comprised of a bunch of different data from OpenStreetMap, uh, and now it's just split up. It's not styled here because, uh, well, you'll find out why in a second, because I'm going to go into different types of tiles. Um, cool, so same, same URL structure, uh, Z, X, and Y, a minute of time. So, um, all right, so. I'm going to go through two very brief examples that show you the HTML, the CSS, and the JavaScript uh, required to create a web map. The first one is going to be using leaflet.js, which I talked about at the very beginning. And the second one is going to be using Mapbox GLJS. Um, so I'm going to open this up, and I'm doing everything on the internet because I don't trust my computer to work and while I'm uh, talking about code. Um, and for those who C code and it makes no sense, that's totally okay. It doesn't need to make sense right now. Uh, I'm just showing basically the like very small number of lines needed to make a map work uh, on your web page. Uh, so this is using leaflet. Leaflet loads, if you can't see that, I apologize. I don't know how to make this any brighter. Um, so we've got CSS, as I mentioned earlier, and that's gonna style your map, or style uh, your web page, excuse me. You're gonna load leaflet, the JavaScript library, so that's our ingredient, web mapping library. Uh, 
the fourth ingredient internet is fairly obvious at this point because I'm using it. Um, and then let's see, what else did I, what else are our ingredients? Um, tiles, where are our tiles coming from? Well, we can list off this URL that's pointing to a tile URL, which I just went to. Uh, so this is going to the Mapbox tiles API and requesting them. Uh, it needs an access token, which is exactly what I just did incorrectly. Um, so this one's correctly working there. And then Mapbox, you can create your own maps. So you need to pass in the ID of this tiles that you want to retrieve. Um, so this is using Leaflet. Uh, Leaflet has the ability to request tiles from any number of different companies. It doesn't have to be Mapbox. It can request those open street map tiles. It can request Esri tiles. It can even request Google tiles, but Google will probably yell at you um, if you try and hack that a little bit. Um, but basically showing you this because Leaflet can request, oh, sorry, that's a really dark map. I should have done something lighter. Um, but it exists there, I promise. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, so it can load in a, a bunch of different things. It's not specific to Mapbox. Um, cool. So that's, we're halfway done with all the code I'm going to ever show. Uh, so bear with me. Um, and in all presentations, things get complex. Everything I've said is a lie. Um, <laughs> it's kind of true. No, not really. Uh, so let's complicate things. There are two types of map tiles. Everything I've shown just up until now is a raster tile. It's an image. It's literally like you take an image or you take a photo with your phone, you download it. It's a PNG. It's a JPEG. Uh, everything that comes out of a map tiling machine that is a raster tile is a PNG or a JPEG uh, or a different format. Um, 